what did you make of last night's performance? Uh, l- a little bit lacklustre. Um, and I think everyone will agree with me in terms of, can we please not draw Israel ever again for a good while now? Because that's <laughs> three <laughs> games in such a short space of time. And trust me, I've had to analyse two of them for my pro licence and they've not been great to actually analyse. And last night wasn't any better. Um, two similar teams in the way that the styles that they play. Um, Israel as well, they don't really chuck many bodies uh, forward. Uh, very patient in their build-up. And as we know, Scotland, uh, you know, which they've been very good under Steve Clark defensively. But again, there was question marks last night in terms of uh, the attacking prowess and where are the chances and where are the goals are going to come from. Is Scotland seem to be very clinical when it comes to taking penalties, but... Um, they seem to struggle, you know, creating goals and chances from open play, don't they? Um, look, there's still a couple of players missing at the moment. James Forrest uh, has been out for, for some time now. And even Ryan Fraser didn't play um, the other night also. He's, he's been out injured uh, for this uh, this spell that, that Scotland's been playing. So with them two coming back and hopefully a, a fully fit uh, Lee Griffiths, you're hoping that you're going to be a lot stronger come the Euros uh, anyhow. And I, I suppose Steve Clark will be be looking to try and unearth a few more before that as well. But obviously your base up top with, with the way Lyndon Dykes plays, uh, it's been very successful for Scotland. And he's laid down the platform for, for others to go and support and holds the ball up. And uh, it's been pivotal to the success that, that Scotland had to qualify for the Euros. Um, but I guess now that, they have qualified. Everyone's looking at, well, we're now there. Um, how are we going to score goals when we get there? Uh, we can't really defend, you know, for the for the full game and, and try and, well, they can. But, um, you know, these these sides they're going to be playing against, you know, in the, the, this tournament, it's, it's going to be tough. So, And look, they've still got uh, ambitions for the World Cup as well. So th- there's a huge group to come up with that as well. So... Um, Steve Clark touched on it last night. This is this isn't the fully fledged finished article right now. So uh, we're still working on that, and it's very tough when you you only get to play for for a short period of time. And that was the third game in in a short space of time, also. So you know, I think uh, we've got to really take the positive from from this whole last couple of weeks, and and that's obviously qualifying for for a tournament for the first time in 22 years. Can we just talk about Ollie McBurney? Because obviously a lot of pressure on him at the moment. What do you make of that, Scott? Yeah, I never even mentioned Ollie McBurney. Poor Ollie McBurney right now. I just It's one of those things for me. I, I can really sympathise with him in terms of where he's at, probably where his headspace is at as well. And um, I think a few people in the media have been saying it already. It's not very fair in terms of the criticism he has been getting. You know, he's playing for Scott. He's playing for his national team. He's very proud to play for his country, as I was. Uh, playing for Australia. Uh, unfortunately, just sometimes you don't fit into the style of play or, or the system. Um, and as the games go by and, and the success isn't there for you, you try even harder and harder. And with the press and, and then you've got, obviously, social media these days, it, it's very, very difficult for the individuals. So uh, for me, um, obviously, he's playing in the Premier League. So, you know, there's no question he's a top player. He wouldn't be there otherwise. Uh, I think he just needs that little break when it comes to playing for Scotland. So you'd be hoping that that can happen before the Euros. Um, and then if it was, then you've certainly got another attacker there that, that, that could be very, very useful come the Euros. Um, but I think for me, Lee Griffiths is, is so pivotal to Scotland moving forward, um, especially for this, you know, Euros coming on. Uh, if he can be fit, there's no question that he's the best finisher that Scotland have got. And he's an out-and-out goal scorer. He's a goal getter. Lyndon Dykes, on the other hand, if you look at his record over the period of time in his professional career, he isn't that. You know, I think he, his best came at Livingston last year. You know, I think it was something like 12 goals. Uh, but if you look previous to that and already this year, I think he's only scored one in the championship. It was a penalty. You know, so where are the goals going to come from from Lyndon Dykes as well? So uh, there's big question marks. But I, I'd like to see... You know, Steve Clark look at maybe playing when they're all fit. You know, the likes of Ryan Fraser, uh, Ryan Christie and James Forrest all on that one team. Because if you've got players like that that can deliver, you know, uh, service, I think someone like Lyndon or, or Lee Griffiths will certainly get on the end of it.